Oh, Kike Pereza. Hi, my name is Hannah. Thank you for coming here to my channel. Wonderful to have you. Hope you're having a great day. Today, we're going to talk about furnishing and styling your home in a financially responsible and ultimately more mindful way. These are eight common mistakes that I and others have made while trying to furnish our homes on a budget. Before I get into these tips slash mistakes that I see happening, I do want to say these obviously are not hard and fast rules. There's always an exception to the rule. You do you. Um, and of course, they're mistakes that I have made multiple times. So no judgment, judgment-free zone, but here are some good ideas coming at you. Ready? Here we go. Mistake number one, shopping at expensive designer stores. I know I just said we're on a budget, so maybe you're thinking, what? Who's doing that? Some people are doing that. I'm not going to take long on this one. Um, you're paying for the brand. There are dupes. If you've just got to have the look, go shop a dupe. Do not shop at West Elm, CB2, Restoration Hardware, or anywhere with that kind of price tag. Girl, it ain't for us, and that's okay. With that being said, don't just exclusively shop at Target and Ikea though, okay? You want some furniture that wasn't just put together with an Allen wrench, right? Which leads us to mistake number two, not shopping secondhand. Thrift stores are amazing. You can find great quality stuff at an affordable price and it has a story, it has character, and it will actually hold up. What I like about secondhand is that it guarantees that your home is going to be unique because ain't nobody else got it. And it gives a much more lived in look and therefore curated look. There's good stuff out there just looking for a home, okay? Adopt, don't shop. P.S. If it's feasible, uh, check out Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, like online secondhand store stuff in big cities near you. So I live in kind of a small town, but three hours away, there's a bigger city. And if I happen to be going there anyways, or if I find something for an incredible deal, it's worth it to me to drive out there and get it. Basically, bigger population means more competitive prices and more options. Mistake number three, buying something out of your budget. Remember, we're on a budget. You got to stick to the budget. Don't decorate your home at the detriment of your financial security. For that matter, don't make any excuses for non-necessities. Be responsible with your money. If you can't pay your bills stress-free, you don't need to spend hella bank on decor and clothing and makeup and video games and any non-necessity. I'm not saying you can't improve your space and decorate. I'm just saying always remain in budget. On this note, I've got a rant real quick. Afterpay and Klarna, any of this buy now, pay later stuff, please do not use that. They are normalizing you being in debt. You do not go into debt for this stuff, okay? No. Yeah, the Klarna thing makes no sense to me. So you don't have to be approved, like it's instant approval is what they call it, aka there is no approval process. Anyone can sign up for it. Uh, it doesn't improve your credit at all to use it. It can only hurt your credit. It doesn't build credit. So people with credit cards, like I don't see them using it because they can wait a month before they pay for their stuff. People with credit cards aren't using this. People with credit cards get points for that shit and cash back. There's no reason to use Klarna. It's only younger people or just people in general that can't get approved for a credit card and they're more at risk for defaulting. It's ridiculous. Don't fall for their schemes, honey, don't. You are smarter than that. Don't play their games. It's an outrageous, ooh, we're done talking about Klarna. Please don't, please don't. You don't go into debt for small stuff like this. You've just gotta think, what if you lose your job or your housing situation? Some big expense shows up or a huge deduction in your income happens and you're still owing money in two weeks on what? Some clothes and home decor? That's nuts. Another reason to shop secondhand. They don't take afterpay. Remember, the fewer monthly obligations 
financially that you have, the more freedom you have. The more financial freedom you have, the more flexibility you have to take risks with your career and make money moves and ultimately increase your income. Mindfulness takeaway, trust that all that you need will come to you in time. Take a nap over here. Shit. Mistake number four is not having your priorities straight when it comes to the order in which you purchase everything. Prioritize big impact pieces over little stuff. And I don't mean big impact in design. I mean big impact on your everyday life. Just remember every 10 to $20 that you spend on another lamp, or a throw pillow or a plant is another 10 to $20 that you could have saved and finally bought a comfortable mattress so you could get a good night's sleep and feel refreshed or a couch that meets your needs by being big enough to have movie nights and you can pull it out into a guest bed or maybe a desk that you can journal at and it's got lots of drawers for you to stay organized and clutter free or a cabinet for storage. So again, your house can be decluttered and therefore more functional and peaceful and just a better home. You've just got to think of the big picture. What's really going to make an impact? Because there are big purchases that you want, right? You can't have them if you keep saying yes to every little purchase. Ultimately, eventually, you have to say no to a lot of little purchases in order to say yes to that big one that you've been waiting for. Just ask yourself, what would make your life at home easier, more enjoyable, happier, more peaceful? Buy that first. Also, by the time you get all of the big pieces into your house, this is just a design perspective on it, all the little stuff that you've acquired might not even work with those big pieces. Basically what I'm saying is do not buy a bunch of like table centerpieces and runners and tablecloths and such before you own a table. You don't know if your table is going to wind up being round, rectangular. You don't know if all that stuff will fit. You don't know the material your table is going to be made of. You don't know if this stuff is going to match. Little decor pieces. I would suggest you put that off as long as possible um, because it may not all match and work together by the time you have your big pieces. Now, not trying to sound too judgy because I absolutely have done this multiple times, still do. If I find something I truly love, yes, girl, I buy it and I store it away somewhere and I tell myself, I'm gonna use this later, but who knows if I ever will. And by the time I finally get to use it, what if it's not my style anymore? That oftentimes is what happens. So just make like a mental or even a physical list of the order in which you should acquire these things. If you've got just a lot of ideas jumbled around in your head, organize them, write them down. Mindfulness takeaway, just think of the future you. Look at the big picture. Mistake number five, splurging in the wrong areas. So yes, we're on a budget and we're sticking to a budget, but there's a time and a place to buy something new or buy something more expensive and high quality. The time and place is not art. It's not decor and trinkets. Uh, that might be important to you, but again, please prioritize. If you're going to splurge, splurge on function. It's going to have a way bigger impact on your happiness in the long run. You know, like sleep on a comfortable bed before you ball out on some fancy $50 laundry basket. Pay for quality where it matters and can make an actual difference in your quality of life. Mistake number six, not considering a DIY project. So just so you know, you can build a table. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, yes. Look around you in your home. All this furniture can be built by hand by a person. The best thing about it is that it's customized to your needs. Like it's going to function as you need it because you designed it. We wanted a coffee table that was really big and had a shelf underneath to put baskets or whatever. So it was quarantine. Of course, everybody's woodworking. We made one and I stained it beautifully. And then my husband came in and put another sloppy coat of stain and didn't even read the directions and ruined it, but it's fine. I digress. And it meets our needs and it's wonderful. Another thing that's great about a DIY project is that because you made it, you're going to be a lot more forgiving of the quirks it might have, like a bad stain job. And it's fun, dude. It really is. It's cool. Get a skill. The end times could be near. You never know. We might have to be making this shit soon. So you might as well start now. Get ahead. Mistake number seven, buying something that isn't perfect. Okay, so no, nothing is truly perfect, perhaps. But what I mean is that it doesn't tick all the boxes. It doesn't meet your needs. It's just a placeholder, basically, until you find the right piece. So right now I really want a desk and finally, after not finding one for months, I decided, okay, I'll use this plastic fold out table and that'll be my desk until further notice. And this plastic fold out table has also been an entry table. It has been a dining table. It's been a coffee table. She has been around. Okay. <laughs> Very useful. So if you're going to have a placeholder, if you like need a place to work right now, Make it something like this plastic fold-out table. It's cheap. It's useful. If you go camping, you can use it. Like, it has other uses. Don't buy just a lesser desk. And this happens to me usually with thrifting because when you're thrifting, you know, everything's not mass-produced there. They don't have multiples at the store. So already you're like, oh, I got to decide. Am I going to get this right now or not? If I leave, someone else might come and get it. But also, you might find something that is almost there. It ticks a lot of boxes, but some doesn't. Uh, or maybe you finally have been looking for so long and you're like, you know what? This is as good as it gets. I'm not going to find what I'm looking for. And you buy it. So I want to tell you, please don't do what I do. Don't buy it. If it's the wrong size, the wrong style, you're making a lot of concessions and functionality, do not buy it because you are going to find the right piece. So now you're selling it for a loss. You got to go into town, meet somebody to sell it. So that's gas money and some of your precious time. And it's probably big and heavy. And so it's just a whole hassle and wasted money. Don't do it. Don't buy placeholders. Also, just saying, somebody's going to love that object, that piece of furniture. Someone thinks that that is the one, you know, let that couch be the one for somebody, not your rebound couch, right? Not cool. Treat her right. Uh, mindfulness takeaway here is remember that you will find the right piece. Do not think with that lack mentality of this is as good as it will get. Abundance, baby. The last mistake is refusing to live in an imperfect space for the time being. When I was in my very early 20s, um, or yeah, even younger, got an apartment, so excited, had to furnish and style it, make her look cute instantly. I mean, it was out of the question to me to not furnish this thing and make it look beautiful and a vibe. And then it came time to pay rent and I could not pay rent because I just spent my paycheck on all this other stuff. Then I had to give up the apartment altogether. And I didn't have that space. Had to move back in with the P-Rants. So that was dumb. If you're one of these people, I'm here to tell you, you don't need to live in a space that invokes envy right this second or even this year. My biggest piece of advice or perspective to try to instill in you is this is a slow process. You know, with the internet, social media, you're seeing all of these super wealthy people get to completely renovate their homes. You don't know what kind of deals they got from the brands, etc. It's just 
these unrealistic lifestyles. Coming into your home and completely remodeling and changing out all your furniture in like two, three months, that is a luxury for the ultra wealthy. And one day it's going to be us. Today, it's not us, but that's okay. Okay. Because we're going to build character. All right. Yeah. To wrap this up, I did want to bring attention to the fact that a lot of these mistakes are really just one mistake, which is buying something before it's time. If it's out of your budget, it's not time. The more you break your bank and buy stuff out of budget, the more you keep yourself in a scarce economic state and one little emergency could bring you way down to where you don't have a budget for groceries, let alone decor, right? So the more responsible you are with your money, the more you stick to your budget, the more freedom you're going to have to take those risks with your career. Like I said, make money moves and ultimately boost your income so that you can afford more, afford to have a bigger budget, afford to maybe one day not even have a budget, right? If it's just not the right piece, it's not time. If it's the wrong size, wrong color, it's just a placeholder, it's not time. Maybe it's the perfect piece, but for a different space that you do not currently reside in. You ever see something amazing that you know you're going to love in your future home, but you're not in that home right now, okay? Don't buy that. And don't pay for storage to store it somewhere either. You don't have the space. And number two, kind of going back to that lack mentality, it's coming from a place of, I don't think I'm going to find this later. And by the time you're in that future home, you might have a completely different style and vision for the home. And it was a total waste of money. There will be another of whatever it is you're trying to buy. It's just not time. If it's an expensive giant piece of artwork and you don't have a couch yet, prioritize. It's not time. All right, if you wanna learn more about my ideas on mindfulness and manifestation and kind of the beginning of this whole journey, I will link a previous video of mine where I talk more about that. But before you go, I do wanna leave you with an affirmation that you can practice or throw into your next meditation sesh. Um, and I think, I guess what I would call a prayer basically from this cool book called You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay. So I'm going to leave that right after this. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Uh, thrift stores are amazing. That was a weird way to say thrift store. Hi, Tig. Take a nap outside, buddy. You mad at me? Love you. I was mad at you this morning because you kept me up last night. Your ass is outside. All right, you're crooked again.